Today we're talking about shaping techniques. I'm well on my way to making a cylinder here, finishing up step number four, five, and six. Remember, when I'm pulling, I'm going to have my middle fingers pointing right toward each other. These two fingers are working together on the inside, and I have sort of this kitty paw shape on the outside. For the most part, when it's thinner like this, I really just use my fingertips. It allows me to really feel the material between my, my fingers. And when we're shaping, it's really not going to be too much different. Generally speaking, after every pole, I'll call her in the top. Now we have to decide what shape we want. So what I really want is a little bit wider of a pot and a smaller top. To achieve this, I'm going to be having my left hand on the inside, my right hand on the outside, exactly like I'm pulling. You can also use a flexible metal rib on the outside, a rubber rib, wooden rib, any kind of rib you're comfortable with. The very first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and go back down to the bottom. And I'm gonna have the same pulling motion, same hand positions, but I'm gonna increase the pressure on the inside. And you can see that allows the material to expand. I'm basically pulling and shaping at the same time. This is gonna allow me to lose less height I can't tell you how many students I've seen over the years pull their tallest cylinder ever and then they go to start shaping it and it just shrinks. So you really want to learn how to stretch the material out and not push it out. There's a big difference. You can see I've left a little cylinder on the top. That's really important if I want to collar this in. Instead of my fingers being on the outside this time, I'm going to use a flexible metal rib. My hand's still going to be in the shape of a kitty paw, but I'm going to be holding that rib instead. Slight flex. My middle finger is going to be back just a little bit, so the rib is going to be touching the material. And I'm going to be applying force against that rib and doing another pull. This gives you a really nice, clean surface. And don't forget to slow down as you progressively work your way out and through the steps. Remember, it's very important to have good form. We talk about the outside of the pot as being the line of the pot. If you were to cut this in half, lay it on a piece of paper and trace that, that would be the line of the pot. Now to get the top to come in, generally speaking, I would have my, my fingers in a perfect circle wrapped all the way around, but it's a little bit small. So what I need to do is actually add the back of my ring finger. So I have six points of pressure, two thumbs, middle fingers, and back of my ring fingers. You might need a little lubrication, really only where you need it. I'm gonna tuck my elbows into my ribs so it's stable. Make sure everything's equally spaced out and I also like to lightly touch my index finger down against the rib this is gonna the rim this is gonna help me bring it in I see people when they're collaring sometimes it looks like an oval or a square or a triangle it's really important to keep it as round as possible collaring will sometimes thicken up the rim just a little so you can reach down and pull up some of that clay Experiment with different sides of the rib, whatever makes you comfortable. Some people like the rounded side, some people like the, the straight side. If you want to thicken the rim down, you can squeeze ever so lightly right below the rim and compress with your index finger. This will thicken the rim. 
to give the pot some more visual weight. Your hands are the most amazing tools. Every finger is going to give you a different mark. Most pots are going to be finished and trimmed on the bottom. And that's done leather hard and I will show that later in the video series. But first thing you have to do is at least undercut the bottom with an angle stick or one of these foot tools. Just place it down at, at three o'clock and that's gonna get rid of some of this excess clay. It's also gonna allow you to have the wire glide right underneath it without it floating up and cutting through the base. I'm gonna cut this up the middle and have a look at the wall. You can see I have a nice even wall, so it's not necessarily going to be thinner here where I stretch it out the most because I'm pulling and depositing clay as I'm moving out, so I'm stretching the material as opposed to pushing it out. I hope this shape, shaping technique helps you. We'll go over some more in a few.